This Sunday, November 1st, is the Solemnity of All Saints. And because it falls on a Sunday, uh, it supersedes the 31st Sunday in ordinary time. And so we'll celebrate that uh, Solemnity, the Holy Day of Obligation, which we would normally celebrate during the week, on this weekend's Masses. And so I want to cover a little bit about that. First, about, a little bit about the history of the Solemnity. Second, about the stages of the Church that kind of connect it with November 2nd, the commemoration of all souls. And third, just connecting it to the readings that we hear for the Solemnity. So the commemoration of all saints was first celebrated in the East. Uh, the feast was found in the West on different dates in the 8th century. Uh, the Roman Martyrology mentions the date uh, that this date, November 1st, is a claim of fame for Gregory IV, and that he extended the observance to the whole of Christendom, even though it does seem certain that Gregory III preceded him in doing this. It was finally Gregory VII that transferred the anniversary of this dedication to November 1st. You've probably heard the terms uh, church triumphant, church penitent, church militant, and kind of wondered how they fit in. And so really they do kind of fit in on this uh, solemnity as well as the next day. We kind of see the connection between all three. When we talk about the church triumphant, we're talking about the saints in heaven. When we talk about the church uh, penitent, we talk about those souls that are in purgatory, again, uh, working towards heaven, that, you know, they, it's already decided they're going to heaven, but they're still trying to purify themselves uh, before entering heaven. And when we talk about the church militant, that's us, those who are on this earth, again, uh, that are working and doing the deeds of the church, fighting evil here on earth. And so you can see the connection between those three and the Solemnity of All Saints, followed by the Commemoration of All Souls on November 2nd. So looking at the readings for this weekend, um, we see uh, kind of a good connection about basically how do we get to heaven. And so the first reading, you know, we kind of uh, need to know our destination. You know, where are we going in life? We know what comes after death. And so the first reading reminds us of that. You know, in Revelation, St. John sees God's angels of destruction hovering over the four corners of the earth. And their job is to put an end to human history. Uh, that sorry, uh, sorry story of sin, greed, injustice, and destruction. Yes, the world will come to an end, and God will not permit injustice, sorrow, and sin to last forever. He will put things right. So St. John sees these angels poised to do damage, but then he sees they are instructed to wait. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. So now that we know the destination, when we look at the second reading, we're looking at knowing who we are. It's not enough to know where we're going. Uh, as human beings, we also need to know who we are. And in the second reading, we're reminded that see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God, yet so we are. So children of God, members of God's family, we have Christ's blood flowing through our veins, just as all the saints did. And in continuing with this reflection, which uh, is from epriest.com, the saints knew this and lived in accordance with the thought that they are children of God. And this kind of comes to mind that a, a number of people choose a confirmation name a name of a saint that's particularly inspired us and whom we can identify in a personal way. And so this may be, on this Feast of All Saints, an opportunity to renew our choice, you know, that, uh, to, to think of, again about our confirmation name and why we chose that saint and that connection. So now that we know where we're going and who we are, then we get to the Gospel where we need to basically learn uh, how to reach the destination, uh, because it's not enough to know who we are and where we're going. We also need to know how to get there. And today's Gospel passage reminds us of the Beatitudes, the basic attitude of Christ, and the basic attitudes that help us live as Christians. St. Matthew places the Beatitudes at the start 
of his Christ's Sermon on the Mount. They serve as a summary of everything else Jesus will say throughout the Gospel. They also summarize everything that Jesus himself lived out during his time on earth. The Beatitudes take the Ten Commandments to their fulfillment. The commandments were about exterior actions, thou shalt and thou shalt not. The Beatitudes, on the other hand, are about the interior attitude of the heart that produce action. Blessed are the meek, the merciful, the peacemakers. What we do flows out from what we are. And so what we are, uh, we should act like Christ. God himself is the way to our destination. We should know that God loved the Father by fulfilling his will, even to the point of dying on a cross. He loved his neighbor, as we heard in the reading just last weekend, uh, and that we should as well, by, by leaving behind the glory of heaven and coming to earth to teach, heal, and forgive our sins. And again, that loving God and neighbor, the core of the Beatitudes, uh, the attitude of the heart that focuses on God and others, than on ourself.